Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. Can we lift our hands and bless this great God? The one who, whose reign is from everlasting to everlasting. is the Lord of hosts himself. The God full of love and compassion. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. <laughs> we honor you, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. illustration please be seated thank you thank you lord <laughs> i'm excited because this morning i have a simple instruction to reintroduce god to you okay <laughs> I taught a message, and the message is not really in circulation. So we're going to put it out um, today. But I want to give you an illustration from that teaching, okay? Imagine, just imagine, <laughs> coming from a background where you dare not hug your dad. And then you see another child hugging the dad. You will almost feel the child is sinning. What I'm trying to say is that your experience is unique to you. Don't generalize it. To some, God is God. To others, is daddy. Okay? And psychologically, it's been proven. That you almost may not see God differently from the way you perceive your earthly father. Until you have been taught again. Now, love up on God. And say, I love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Uh, you are not, look at the way you are doing it. Just give that hug. And say, I love you, Lord. Because if you don't understand the love of God, intimacy will look like sin. 
Yes. As you start going intimate with God and doing certain things, you will begin to feel, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you shouldn't talk to God this way. Maybe you shouldn't tell God, we need to talk. <laughs> Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Scent of water, part three. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Of all this series, this is the most important. I have cried my eyes out. I'm not ashamed to cry before the congregation because it is real to me. And then on Tuesday, we start a new series. I think they can project that uh, media if you <laughs> if you are in tune <laughs> and you are ready this morning help us project that new series I'm going to take that for two weeks then we wrap the year with a new series titled Isaac and Ishmael We're going to be studying how a person can bet two extremes and how to avoid the pitfalls. I want to show you something about the story of Esau and Jacob. Are you with me? Are you sure? I want to show you their story. And I want to show you a different perspective to it. Okay, this is the new series, Broken Bones, starting on Tuesday. <laughs> okay, so get ready for it. Now, back to our series now, Scent of Water, put that on the screen. So we want to pick a few stories. I hope to show you three stories, uh, but if I'm not able to, I hope to show you lessons from the story of Esau, from the story of Reuben, and from the story of Samson. So I'm going to start from Esau. So let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter number 9. Romans, chapter number 9. I want to especially welcome everyone to church this morning, those seated and those connected online with us. Yes, we honor you and we are privileged to have you here. Thank you. You know, there was a particular year that I got into depression and my only request was how will you send me into ministry and I can't afford to buy a shoe? Yes, a shoe. The day they were to ordain us, I was the last to kneel down. Not because I was proud, but because the shoe I was wearing, the hole under my legs was actually touching the ground. So I've come to announce to somebody, you will be happy again. <laughs> Romans chapter number 9. I will start the reading from verse 6 so we can have quite some detailed study. Not as though the word of God, Romans 9 from verse 6, not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they, are they all children, but in Isaac shall your seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. 
You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, it's like God specializes in waiting for things to be too late then show up so it can be clear it is him. Now look at this story from verse 11. Now. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the promise of the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that calls it was said to her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written jacob have i loved Esau have i hated what shall we say then is there righteousness with god god forbid for he said to moses i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it's not of him that wills, not of him that runs, not of God that shows mercy. You know, we, we love this scripture. And the reason why we love scriptures like this is because you put yourself in the Jacob part. If you are on the other side of the divide, is God still a good God? <laughs> Better think before you answer that question. I feel, unless we understand this scripture, if we judge as humans, it is not fair. Talk to me. You have not done anything. Esau has not done anything good or bad. God just be favorite. How? How is he right? So if God has chosen one as favorite, so why is he allowing the other person to struggle? What's the point? Just pick your favorite and move. True? It's not fair on Esau. Just say Esau. He didn't even say, he said Esau have I hated. True? But what exactly is happening? Do you mind showing you what is happening? I'd like to show you. When you read the Bible, basic, listen, basic biblical humanetics, basic, know who he's talking. Know who he's talking to. Then you will understand the circumference of what he's saying. Let's start from the simplest. Who is the person talking? God. Let's look at a few qualities of this God. Number one. He's ageless. We don't know where he came from. Have you tried to think... What would have happened? Is there a family of God? Is there something happening in this constellation that we don't know anything about? Maybe the remaining gods will just wake up one day and say, no, no, no. I <laughs> Anybody, you think, you think about this. What is he not telling us? <laughs> Another quality of this God is that he is not in time. He created time, but you operate outside of it. Okay? You are like that too. You are in time. But there are situations that take you out of time. So let me explain. It. Very simple. Okay? Let me give you an illustration. How many of you here have you've seen a movie before? Hello, Sir of Light Church. Seen a movie before? Okay, thank you. So come. So imagine a new movie just came out, a blockbuster. And he said, Apostle, we're going to go and see this movie together at the same. I said, yes. <laughs> but somehow, somebody sent me a link to watch it online. So I watched the movie from beginning till the end. Then both of us started watching the movie. And all the suspenseful part, I seem not to be responding. Because as far as that movie is concerned, he's the only one who is in time. 
I already know the end before we started. The producer of the movie cannot have the suspense you have because the story was finished before it was acted. If when the movie is starting, the producer says, I like Bimbo, he is speaking from the part of what he has watched from beginning till the end. The ones who are confused are those who are in the middle. So when God said, Jacob have I loved, where was he speaking from? He has seen their life play. And he loved the decisions he made. And he said, I like that. You are the beginning of a finished project. Now listen. Jesus said, Lo, I come in volume of books as it is written of me to do your will, O God. Please pay attention. In all your knowing, you must know the script that was written concerning you. That when the devil tries to bring the opposite, and suddenly a doctor is saying, you have this medical condition. You can say, according to what is written in the script that God has shown me from the end, I did not die of sickness. That's where faith comes from. It is outside time. They said, look at it. This is, we saw a vision concerning you. You died of accident. <laughs> according to the script, I lived very old. And God can't show me what doesn't exist. According to the script, you didn't marry wrong. If you are trapped in time, you'll be conquered by what conquers time? Agitation. Depression. Oh, apostle. May you finish well. According to the script, I finished well. <laughs> I said amen. That's where God was talking from. We have been able to paint a Nigerian God because we believe we are Jacobs and to hell with the Esau's. So I want to show you something about Esau today. How that, if it's just about living, ah, Sir, that guy, na man he be. Never believe any negative prophecy. He said in Jeremiah twenty-nine verse eleven that I know the thought that I think towards you. They are thought of peace, not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. An expected hand. Say it, the hand is sealed. Yes. Say it again, the hand is sealed. Yes. So let me let me paint a very quick narrative. Is that okay? Let me just share the story. I like to tell stories. So this this was the word that went to the mother. This is you will have two nations are within you. The younger shall serve the the elder shall serve the younger. This this. So it means that according to that word of prophecy, Isaac was supposed to give the birthright. To Jacob. He was supposed to. Both of them chose two different professions. Jacob was the guy that was at home to till the ground and do all those things. Esau was the field guy. And it's not a crime to be a field guy. That's what he chose. Okay? And he must have been responsible enough for the father to say, go and get me venison, I want to bless you. For the father to hear that prophecy and still choose to give him, there must be something he's doing right. And Rebecca heard and called Jacob. I see, your father is about to give the blessing to your brother. This, this, this. Now, Estin, get me a kid. I'm going to kill and prepare. Dress it and take it to your father. Ah, Jacob said, I know you want me to be blessed, but if that day you find out that I am not Esau, it will, it will cost me. Rebecca said, when he released the cost, let the cost be on me. That's favor. 
When people go out of their way to carry you till you get to your destination, it's favor. He said, let the cost be on me. Then they demonstrated something that showed us that it was not about Jacob. It was about Christ. When she killed the animal, she placed the skin on him. Jacob got to Isaac. Isaac said, come my son. And he smelled the smell. The Bible said he touched his body. And he said, this is the body of Esau. But the skin, the voice of Jacob. That is, as we come before the Lord, we are clothed with the flesh of the one who died. Oh, yes. It is Christ, but the voice of Nakali. Do you understand that? And he said, what did he say? He said, I want to eat it, then bless you. But the Bible said in Genesis 27, projected verse 27, that he smelled the smell of his raiment. Uh -uh. He said, cook, let me eat. Blessing will be provoked. Then he smelled. What did he smell? What died for him to be blessed? When he smelled it, Look at it. He smelled the smell of, and did what? Bless him. And said, the smell of my son. What is the smell of his son? That's not the smell of his son. That's the smell of what died. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It has the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. I smell Christ. Yes, sir. <laughs> this, this people in my family, shut up. It ended. Look at it. Which the Lord has blessed. Verse 28 now. Therefore, God gives you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve you. Let nations bow to you. Be Lord over your brethren. Let your mother's son bow to you. You know, there's something happening. And he began to say, say, cost be anyone that from the moment he said cost be anyone that costs you. It means even if I find out now that you are a deceiver, I can no longer mm. cost you. Mm. He sealed it. Right. And blessed be everyone, be he that bless you. Verse 30 now. <laughs> this, this doesn't make sense. As it came to and it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an hand of blessing Jacob. Jacob was scarcely gone from his presence. Then he saw came in. Meaning that if the narrative was here about let me eat them, bless you. Jacob stood no chance. He saw will catch them there. Some of you go will have to hasten your journey. Because the normal protocol will be lateness. So you will have to break protocol because there is a need to shrink time. I'm sensing emergencies in heaven. There are things you have said they will be for later. But they are actually for now. Because the activity of God can't wait. Mm. <laughs> Please be seated. Ah! Sir, Esau did not come late. It was just the fragrance of what died that spoke. The person that is coming behind you is not lazy. It is the grace of Jesus that spoke for you. Yes, sir. The person that is not doing well like you, they are not dull. It is the fragrance of Christ that is speaking for you. When God lifts you, become more humble. If it was by works, you will never be there. It is amazing how we get it by grace, then come back to teach works. So that we can... You know what we are doing? We are pulling off the skin of the one that died. And we are now bare. And we confuse a generation. I'm sorry. I would have loved to say a few things, but I'm not confrontational. And we come back and give standards that you did not actually enter through that standard. How that not many wise were called. Not many nobles were called. But God used the foolish things of this world to confront the wise. The fact that God is using you is a proof that he meant you stupid. Do now come back and act as though you hand it. It's a lie. Second Corinthians 4 verse 1. Seeing therefore as we have this ministry, we faint not, having received mercy. 
every ministry is a product of mercy. Oh God, I can't be the one that will do this. That's exactly the reason why you are the one. Because grace is not needed where there's ability. And what God wants to do, he wants to take full credit for it. Say it, I'm graced. I'm graced. Come on, say it again, I'm graced. I'm graced. Say it again, I'm graced. I'm graced. Let, let's read the full story because I think most of us usually stop there. And then let's, let's interpret this in normal parallels. Let's interpret this. Alright, that same Genesis chapter number 27. Okay, are you with me? Are you tired of my teaching? No, Should I stop? No, Alright. Now let's continue from where we stopped. Now verse 30. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. And Jacob was yet scarce gone from his presence. And he saw his brother came from his hunting. And he also had made a savory meat and brought it to his father. And said to his father, let my father arise and eat the son's venison that your soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said to him, who are you? You will not be asked, who are you, when you get to your day of manifestation. And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that has taken the venison and has brought it me? And I've eaten of all before you came. And I've blessed him. And he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard these words, the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. And he said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Your brother came with subtlety and has taken away your blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times, took away my birthright, and now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me and Isaac answered and said to Esau behold I have made him your Lord and all his brothers and I have given to him for servants sorry all his brothers have I given to him for servants and with corn and wine have I sustained him and what shall I do now to you my son and Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, with God there is always more. Say there is always more. Say it again. I'm going to show you. Let's look at a few things. Behold, thy dwelling place shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Did he say the same to Jacob? Yes. Continue. And by thy sword shall thy live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. Thou shalt break his yoke from your neck. Can you give me this in Amplified Translation? Give me this in Amplified Translation. By your sword, you shall live and you shall serve your brother. But the time shall come when you will grow restive. Another translation use restless when you are tired. Then you will tear his yoke from your neck. Meaning that it is breakable. He gave him a blessing, showed him the consequence of missing his, then showed him the way out. Now let's continue, please. And he saw held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing of his father, because of the blessing his father had given him. And he said to himself, The days of money of my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Let's look at the picture. Please come, people. Come. Come, Nakali. Come. Come. Bright. Come. Don't worry. You are safe. Stand here. This is a mother. Come. 
stand beside her. This is a father. These are their two children. The father was going to die. The mother had joined hands with one of the sons. They have deceived the father. The father has blessed him. When he took the blessing, he ran away. Then, we have one left. Esau. The father began to look at the mother. So you have deceived me. Marriage had issues on his final day on earth. Second son ran away. First son was telling the dying father, just know your day of mourning are here. I'm going to have time to kill him. The family will no longer be the same again. The last meeting they had as a family was the last they will ever have. The man is dying. The mother a widow. First son running after the younger one. The younger one a fugitive. No family. Because somebody thought he was smarter than God. It is from here we are going to learn broken bones. And that was the end of that family. And please thank you. Sit down. <laughs> Let me just teach the remaining issues. And the one that was blessed will go on to fall in love with a girl and they will tell him that the criteria to marry this girl is to serve for seven years. Seven years, you have it, I will serve. Serve for seven years. They gave him the wrong woman. What we ordered versus what we got. He said, ah, that's why we don't do weddings at night, too, so that you will be sure. I don't say that, eh? I asked for Rachel, you gave me Leah. All right? Woke up feeling this. Eh, 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 what did you give me? They said, okay, that one that you wanted, according to our culture, we can't just give you that girl. Okay, this is the elder sister. Well, you'll have to serve for another seven years. Then he did it. 14 years. To get a woman. Put yourself in the condition of Leah now. Are you that bad? That somebody won't mind serving another seven years? <laughs> because he doesn't want to have you. It doesn't make any sense. True? Does it make sense? No. I would have loved to show you the children he gave birth to and discover that sometimes the stones that the builders reject, the chief cornerstone. Okay? But look at it. The guy kept struggling and struggling. We were not hearing much about Esau. But the guy that carried, how will the person carrying the blessing of Abraham be a servant. How? And the brother, Esau, concluded he was not blessed. Jacob is the guy. Until I saw something. When I saw it, I said, this God. Turn your Bibles with me. Genesis chapter number 30. Are you with me? Are you there? Let me jump a bit. Okay, Genesis 33, sorry. Wow. Let's look at this reunion. Genesis 33. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. From verse 1. And behold, Esau came and with him 400 men and he divided his children to Leah and to Rachel and 200 handmaids and two handmaids and he put the handmaid and their children foremost and Leah and her children and Rachel and Joseph last and he passed on before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times I thought the blessing was that Esau would bow to Esau to Jacob as he was seen, he saw from afar. The majesty was seen. The beauty was seen. He was bowing down seven times. Where does that? Where does that? Where does that? And 
and Esau ran to meet him and they embraced him. Esau that said, I will kill him. Three chapters again. It seemed like he has learned something. And he ran towards Jacob. <laughs> and he embraced him. More like the father of the prodigal son. And fell on his neck and killed him. And kissed him, sorry, not killed him. <laughs> and they wept. And lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children. And said, who are those with you? And he said, the children which God has graciously given your servant. Then the handmaid came near and their children and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And Joseph came near and Rachel and bowed themselves. And he said, what mean you by the drove which I met? That is the gift you sent ahead. And he said, these are these things, I'm sorry. And he said, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough. <laughs> my brother, I have enough. Keep that you have to yourself. And Jacob said, no. I pray you, no. If, I, if now I have found grace in your sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore, have I seen your face as though I have seen the face of God. Are you pleased with me? Take now, I pray you, my blessings that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough, he hurt him. And he took it. And he said, let us take our journey and go. And I will go with you. And he said to him again, Jacob said to Esau, my Lord knows that the children are tender. So let me explain. There were different folds of the blessing. And Isaac gave Esau that there's an hack. He said, the day you become restless, you will break his yoke from your neck. When I read that, I wish Esau said, what about the neck of my descendants? But Isaac said, as far as you are concerned, Esau, you will break it. Let me show you something. According to scriptures. If you, if you listen to my message, it's one of the teachings you will need to hear. Encountering God as El Shaddai. I said something in it. That if a man refuses, let me explain. In a way you can understand. When God called Abraham from his father's house and his mother's house, what did Abraham do? God said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make your seed to be as much as the stars of the sky. This, this, that. Ah, fantastic. But Abraham went with Lot. The next time God spoke, because you would think God was making a mistake until you understand the Bible, God began to say, I will bless your seed. I will multiply them. I will do this. It looks like Abraham was out of the equation, but his seed were in the equation. Meaning that when you get out of covenant, if care is not taken, the only part of you that will not be relevant is your womb. You will now have to give birth to children who will do what you cannot do. And that's why you will read in the Bible, this beget, this beget, this beget, this beget, this beget. They were in the equation, but the only part needed was the womb. Never get to a point that the sum total of your destiny is just to birth the next generation. So that God can now find a way to repair them, then use them. Many of you, unfortunately, came from places where God had to move from a generation to you. May he not move from you. Say the amen again. Amen. Have I made that a bit clearer? The reason why I'm giving you that illustration is because Jacob, in the energy of the flesh, if you put him side by side with Esau, 
the one that carried the manifestation of that blessing in the land of the living was Esau. Jacob became relevant for his descendants to continue. And that's why he was always busy, always running up and down, please sit down. Jacob was always trying new things. It's when he saw Esau coming, he's a, he's a smart guy. Very smart. He has divided into two. You go like this. If he kills us, we know we still survive. He, he, there was no record of asking God, what should I do? There was no record. Okay? And he, he kept outsmarting, outsmarting. Actually, God would have had the way to still make sure that even in the last moment, if God has ordained that it is for Jacob, it will come to him. The issue is that when you watch what God said, happening like it's no longer yours, you want to interrupt him. That's the way to bring the opposite. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It will come to him. So he was always agitated. Let me, let, me, let me try this. Let me try that. But there was a particular point, and I want to project that scripture. The moment, in the midst of all this journey, still going ahead, the moment God saw that Jacob was left alone. And for many people, all that God needs to see now is that there comes a moment that you are now at the end of your agitation. No more struggling, no more worry, no more agitation. Eve could not come until God made Adam sleep. Sleep. You are too smart. Sleep. You are too wise. You are too agitated. The moment God saw that he was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the whole law of his thigh. And the whole law of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Jacob, that speech that was your main advantage, we are taking it from you today to enter the blessing. And verse 26. And he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let you go. Except thou... Mean that that blessing was still lacking. Verse 27. And he asked him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. You know, when God asks you, it eats differently. <laughs> bless me, bless me, bless me. And the angel looked at him, What is your name? Deceiver, liar, supplanter. For the first time, you know, God to him, I have been leaving my name. And he said to him, that will no longer be your name. Because you can't enter by deceiving. Thy name shall be called Jacob. Shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. And a new nation was bettered in his greatest weakness. That was when he got it. So he discovered, it is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs. It is of God that shows mercy. What you are running after will be gotten when God conquers you. But as far as Esau was concerned, he walked in it. The fall of a man is not the end of his life. Okay? When we read it, he saw this, he said, the guy got it. He got it. He walked in it. Jacob must have thought when I see him, he's going to be in rags. No. The guy was standing tall. He said, don't worry about your gift. I have more than enough. I'm blessed. I hope you know how Jacob got those things. That was the final spoil. He just got from the father-in-law. He just got those things. It's not like, it's new money. <laughs> he just got those things out. He was not working in it before. He was not. He didn't have it. Listen. I tell you, under God, there is no case in the Bible. Which case do you want to tell me? Is it the fall of Adam? That God gave a verdict and it was a serious ash judgment and it was the final. The only time that ever happened in the Bible was because they never appealed. 
even when Adam fell. Read your Bible, Genesis 3. God told them. He said, who, who was on? The woman said, eh, the serpent beguiled me and I did. The man said, the woman you gave me deceived me and I ate. Woman, what have you done? The woman said, the serpent beguiled me. God looked at the serpent. Show me that scripture. He said, you are cursed above all the cartoons of the field. You are cursed. Upon your belly you will crawl all the days of your life. He looked at Adam. What did he say? Cursed is the ground for your sake. That's the God of the Bible. He's not an assassin. He doesn't have favorite. It looks like the Nigerian God is a God you can employ to kill the one who is not his favorite. It looks like the God of Nigerian church is a God you can employ to, to, to destroy the... And God had taken time to show through our scripture that this is my nature. When Jacob was sold to slavery, you know the story, when Joseph was sold to slavery and all that. He will not come out of prison till he forgave his brothers. And he understood that in their hostility towards him was God walking behind the scene to set him up for the throne. Joseph was a blessed man. But there was another guy there called Judah. Judah was in the midst of the crowd. It was from the loins of Judah that David will come, that Joseph will come, that Jesus will come. Joseph, you suffered. But what you suffered for is still not about you. It is about those, among those who made you suffer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Meaning that you will enter your inheritance when you forgive them and know. It is only a privilege to preserve those that persecuted me. Meaning that your worst enemy is still God's friend. And part of the things you suffered for is still needed for their maintenance. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. You think having suffered all this, God should bring Jesus from the loins of Joseph. He didn't. There is a bigger picture. So when you say, God, use me, understand. Oh, part of using you will be using you to preserve your enemies. <laughs> say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. The way we painted the Nigerian God, it looks very scary. Like somebody can trigger him to kill you the moment you speak against the anomalities in church. Hmm? Hmm. When you tell people that it is wrong to wait for a man of God to fail and say we always know. Say, ah, you don't talk like that because, you know, shut up. God is not trying to kill me to pacify anybody as their favorite. Guess what? He doesn't love you and Jesus differently. He loves you the same way. Now, listen. If God loves one children, he loves some sons more than some sons, then God is building a dysfunctional family. It means God is the author of dysfunctionality. We are equal in his love. I am not better than you because I'm preaching. It is my job description and you have your own job description and you are graced for it everybody's just doing their job if i try to do your own job by if i try to sing now they'll start looking for a bunch of keys for me and uh, picking my key go and pick another one in lube and say <laughs> where did this key go because if care is not taken you know i was giving illustration of football in football how many of you believe that strikers and attackers stand more chance to win the ballon d'or stand better chance. It's not like that with God. We are rewarded for faithfulness based on the assignment, not for what is loud. Do you understand? Yes, yes, it's not about the size of ministry. Oh, Apostle Lazarus is doing the exploit. What about the one who is on the knees praying for him? So the Bible said it's not unjust to forget that labor of love. What I want to show you is that if you stand face to face with Esau, the day his father said, your brother have made him your Lord, you say, Esau, your own is finished. But there is hope for a tree. Do it be cut down. If the root remains in the earth, even if the stump waxes old, at the scent of water, it will spring back again. He said, tell Ezekiah he's going to die. Ezekiel turned his face away and said, God, this is. God said, tell him, 
I've added 16 more years. Never allow any verdict of judgment go unappealed. Look at the Bible. Even Moses, when he said Moses would die, it was not appealed. I told you, one time I called our pastors and I said, if I'm going to maybe discipline someone for doing what is wrong, if you stand in front of me and you are adding petrol to it and say, Apostle, do it, do it, I will suspect you. Appeal for them. Little children, this I write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate of the Father. Now listen. Now listen. Listen to this. Imagine if my daughter misbehave and I say, hey, young lady, naughty corner now. <laughs> I say, hey, take her there. Go and sit down there now. And somebody just get up and say, yes, yeah, slap her, eat her, do this. I will leave the girl and face you. What's your you don't interrupt Jesus and his bride even when the bride is wrong oh this person has made a mistake now he deserves his ministry to end shut up intercede intercede there are ministers in this country they are eagerly waiting for them to crash as far as the God of heaven leave it that day will not come amen that they will not come. That they will not come. Yes. Please be seated. That they will not come. Sir, pray for your pastors. Understand that. That's the nature of God. David and Moses was giving law. This is the law. This is the law. Take this law. This is... One time, Moses said, he said to God, he said, I'm, there's no satisfaction in my spirit. He said, I'm not ready to proceed with these people until you reveal yourself to me. I don't know. I, I want to show you something. Do you mind? No. Yeah, let me show you something. Listen, listen. He said, I'm not ready to proceed with these guys until you reveal yourself to me. In Genesis 24, uh, Exodus 24, let me just quote. God already told Moses, he told Nadab, he told Abihu, he said, gather yourself to this mountain and worship me. And this is, he said, I will come down. He said, let Moses alone come, alone come near. And the rest, worship our father. Go and read your Bible. The Bible said that day God came down. They saw the God of Israel and they heard with him in his presence. The moment that was done, Moses climbed up and he went with God in the clouds. Few chapters later, Moses began to say, show me your glory. The rest will think we have seen everything. I want there is more. I want to know you more. And then God came to Moses and began to reintroduce himself. He said, I will. Look at what God said. God said, I will cause my glory to pass before you. All right? Genesis 33. He said, I will, I will cause my glory to pass before you. All right? And the Bible said, God took Moses and he hid him in the cleft of the rock. Then God covered his eyes. Then God passed before him. Then God proclaimed the name of the Lord. Ah. The more you know God is, the more you know you don't know him. Anytime you stop to boast, you have stopped knowing. Mm. You cannot be in a continuous progress of knowing God and be able to boast. His knowledge humbles us. Look at the name God called himself. Exodus 34. I want to reintroduce this God. Is that okay now? Do you mind? I want to reintroduce him. Look at the name God called himself. In Exodus 24, 34 now. All right, let me, let me start the reading from verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed. Look at the name God. Proclaim himself to a man giving them law. He said, the Lord. The Lord God. Merciful and gracious. That is, Moses giving law found grace. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? He knew that there is a path. You know, when you look at the law, if you do this, you should be stoned. You, you think God will come down and say, I am the one that kills. I'm... Can we read this together loud and clear? The loudest you can. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant. 
Which of these look like the Nigerian God? Hold on. You may not understand what it means for Moses to be hearing this. If this is who you are, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness. So what have I found? Do you understand that? This is this not this is this character. He could only reveal that character in Christ. In fullness. In Christ. This is the character of that God. This is his nature. This is his person. Now you can't look at anybody and say the hope is gone. No. Look at this person and say, you have wasted the most important part of your life. There is nothing that can come out of you again. Now lie. Let me tell you a story. Something you may not know. And I say this because, I mean, I've heard Baba say it himself. When the likes of Bishop Wadebo were already doing ministry and all that, Pastor Yi Adebo was here to be born again. You go and quote me anywhere. All right? He came quite late. The rest, all those men started around their teenage years. He came, he was already married before he gave his life to Christ. He was married before he even got into ministry and started learning and started doing all those things. What I'm saying with this God, you can never write off a man and say that hey, how old are you that you already feel you are too late? Are you in your 90s? Moses started ministry at 80. He tried to start at 40, it failed. 40 years of silence. And God never said, I've changed my mind. 40 years, sir. 40 years of silence. I showed the story of Catherine Kuman. They brought a guest minister to minister in their church and she fell in love with the guest minister and ran away with him for years. I can't remember, about 12 years. Okay. Will you look at that kind of person and say, God will never use one? Or will you call a prostitute, useless woman? But this was God rewriting a story. The Kuman we will read about the same path. God was saying it will still be you Adversities rise. The devil rise. Get to the courtroom of heaven. This is this is. It can no longer be her because according to your word, he that breaks the egg, the serpent will strike. Jesus said, listen to this. There is a blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. If only you know the number of accusations that have risen against you and the victories you won without even appealing. It doesn't matter how skillful your lawyers are. They can only appeal in the court of the earth. But we have an advocate who stands in the court of heaven. She has aborted. So she has no right to give birth to children again. Who is it that says it when God has not spoken? You must understand that. This is the nature of God. Please be seated. Oh, I came late. I've wasted the most important time of my life. Nothing can become of me again. You are just about to start. You are just about to start. I shared with you the story of that woman that was met at the well of Samaria. She has had five husbands. You can't see that in husband's house. Look at her. Useless woman. Mad woman. Bad enough. Then Jesus went to that same woman and she was the first person that he revealed himself to as the Messiah. Show me that scripture. Matthew 5 verse 3, message translation. Matthew 5 verse 3, message translation. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Look at it. Can you give me a message translation? Oh, Lord. There's this song coming to my spirit. Blessed are you, O Lord, my God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are part of those that used to home songs. <laughs> you will know the day we try to sing it. Eternity is only king. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, whose word Brings forth the evening. Baraku and Adonai, Halevora, Beola, Baraku and Adonai, Halevora, Beola. Too much.
more time is. same Jacob stood and he said gather yourselves you sons of Jacob for me to tell you what will befall you on the last days Genesis 49 he couldn't wait he was very angry and he called one of his boys he said Reuben step forward and he looked at him he said Reuben you are my son my firstborn, the beginning of my might, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. What will you say when you hear this? The end of Reuben is finished now. The first has become the last. And he gave his reason, so he was a lawful captive. That is, there's a reason for this cause upon you. What we saw later, give me that same scripture. Deuteronomy, I think 33. And Moses, the servant of God, came. And he looked for that same woman. He searched him out. They, were become, they become so scanty. And he searched him out from the tribe of Israel. And he said, Ruben, let Ruben live and not die. Let not his men be few. God always allow his mercy to appeal all these cases. And we were shocked when Reuben began to make excuses with Moses. Like, we don't want to go to war. And Moses said, Reuben shall go first. Come back to your rightful position. Take it back! Take it back! Your inability to forgive yourself is keeping you in prison. It is not the judgment of God. Keep you didn't know God. And that's why you thought it was his judgment. I'm saying there is nothing under the umbrella sin that his blood did not take care of. There is nothing under the umbrella sin that his blood did not take care of. And when you encounter, we cannot save the world with the current message we are preaching. They don't hate our Jesus. Our message is scared them. The God that we project looks like a God that will find a way to judge you. Because what a man saw. So he's going to find a way to make sure that he judge you with it. Mercy reverses the law of others. We sowed sin, but we reap life. Because Christ was sown for us. Lift your hands, everyone. Say, I'm not condemned. Say, I'm not finished. It is not over. Say it again, it is not over. Say it again, it is not over. Put your hands down. Never run away from God because you feel dirty. Never. Stops you've not been able to stop. It is being close to him and trusting his love, the grace that brings a man out is from that presence. And that's, that's the battle cry of the devil. You are too dirty. Run, run, run. He wants to kill you. You are too bad. Stop church now. Stop at once. God is still in the business of using the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I read the story of Samson. Sir, Samson messed up all his days. Hmm. Yeah, read the story. Everywhere he went, he saw a woman. Always falling in love. Everywhere. One woman or the other. One woman. Are you the only one? All the things they said he should not do, he did. They tried to harass him. He would harass them back. 
But do you know a critical study of the story of Samson? Do you know where Samson was living when they killed him? He was living in Gaza. How did Samson get to start living in the estate of the people he's fighting against? Because his own people bounded him hands and legs and handed him over. He, be, he got to a point he felt safer. Do you understand? In the territory of his enemies than the territory of his own people. That was what happened. And the Bible said he saw a woman. The Philistines had come to meet the woman and said, this is, in fact, the woman was actually a girlfriend of one of them. So he said, go and meet him. And she pillowed his head on her laps. Was enjoying it. Where's your strength? Show me where you're going to study. Something, you know, you say you love me, but you're not telling me the secret. You know, theologians believe that Samson was a very tiny looking guy. Because when you imagine Samson, you imagine six packs. Because you can't separate human ability from God. You imagine six packs like a guy going to the gym. Who may have been going to the gym? I don't have six packs. <laughs> Tired. Thank God there's one of the gym instructors here. So if I, my gym instructor is here, he has <laughs> helped me celebrate him. <laughs> you see the work. This man was actually do. We had do like this. Ah, okay. I know they do again. You can't keep me. <laughs> they say we're gonna go four reps. I know they go. <laughs> they are you can do it. I cannot do it. Are you me? Am I you? <laughs> Sometimes you go to the gym and you look at yourself and say, look at this woman. What you are becoming. Mm. Don't stop. <laughs> the scenery around when no one pursues it. I will shock you. I'm not going there. <laughs> but I will go there. <laughs> Praise God. Now let's. And finally, Samson said, Have you observed my head? There are seven locks there. If you cut them, my strength will go. Have you ever imagined the reason why God put the strength in what has the ability to grow back? Because God knows He's human. He put that strength in what has the ability to grow back. That's His loving kindness. And as they were torturing him, you're a useless guy. Look at you. You are this, you are that. They did not notice that the hair was growing faster than normal. And one day, for the first time in his life, he has never prayed. We never saw a record of him pray. Maybe somebody is here who has never prayed, never studied the Bible. But that part is clear now. Because when you stop spiritual activity for a long time, it looks like cobwebs and everything cover. You don't even know how to start. If I want to start the Bible, you feel too guilty to start. Start at once. Open it. Okay? Open it. Start from Romans, Ephesians. You may not understand, but life is entering your spirit. Start. And as he opened, as he began to communicate to God, we saw that God doesn't keep malice. I did something and God left me for seven days. Is your theology that is wrong? He said, I will never leave nor forsake you. When we were on campus, a lady came to me, one of my friends, or she became my friend through that conversation. And then she said she made a mistake years back, and then since then the Holy Spirit withdrew from her. Ha. Ah, the Holy Spirit. Ha. Ah, Holy Spirit. Withdrew from you. Say yes. Is that mistake that bad? Like you try to dethrone God, said no. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking. And you know what was happening? Fact. I was just gisting with her. It is amazing. People come to me, see me, and they're expecting this man that is teaching. I'm going to see one gigi gigi. They come. They see me play video games. Say, ah, pussy. No, but somebody came to my house one time, and then I really just wanted to impress that he's a man of prayer and got up around 2 a.m. I said to him, 
That's environmental disturbance. <laughs> you don't have to put all of us, you don't have to disturb our sleep because you want to talk to your father. Talk to him quietly. You know, like, I'm in Apostle's house. I must show that I pray. Then he went again. Because then we're on campus. My even mate just called him. He said, oh God, we pray in this house. If you try this again, I will slap you. <laughs> <laughs> About calm down. It was then we discovered that God could actually hear. You have no business impressing anybody. You have no business. And Samson prayed, but God never kept malice. Did I get said, God has always been that left me. We were just gisting. Talking about God, his love, and all that. You know what happened? She just began to cry. We we're talking in the cafeteria. Just began to cry. <laughs> and broke down in tears and began to speak. She said she has not been able to speak in tongues for like 30 years. Ow! It was your mind, not the Holy Spirit. It was your mind. For three years, he's the Holy Ghost, a malice keeper. He never abandoned Jesus, even in death. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the grave be in us, it will quicken your mortal bodies. He doesn't live. Even when we live our, what, our earthly bodies, he will be dead till resurrection morning. Doesn't live. I said he doesn't live. You've made a mistake. You can't perceive him. If your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. He doesn't live. Once your theology is wrong, your experience will be wrong. She began to cry. Break out in tears and in tongues. It was then she discovered. Nobody said receive. Because he's always been there. Yes, Just waiting for her to know that this is my love. I've been waiting. But there's a way you can feel hatred is coming from the place of highest love. And as Samson prayed, God heard. I wish he knew God will hear. He would have prayed a different prayer. Because he said, let me now die with them. And from the knowledge of this God I know, actually, I discovered that his greatest exploit would have been without sight. It would have just been a mystery. How that God is using a man who doesn't have eyes for wonders. But he felt, eh, now that there's scandal, and everybody knows, and I've lost this. It's better to die. And God is saying no. You could ask for more. You become a, you could become a testimony of God's redeeming love. Oh, I've made this mistake. I've lost my ministry. What's left now? Let me just do this exploit and die. No. You could, your life can now become a testimony that God can bring what is dead back to life. Except a grain of wheat first fall to the ground and die. It abides alone. You know the hell of something going back for somebody might be that that marriage that crashed, God is bringing back life from it. The hell of something that grows back for somebody else might be that the business that crashed and all those who thought are friends who describe that they are enemies will be that there's a new spring and again God is showing. I'm the help of the helpless. So I never write off anyone. As far as God is on the throne, at the scent of water, there will be life. There will be life. There will be life. In fact, about Jesus, we now had a conversation. The Bible said, if the princes of this world had known, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Meaning that the devil was running to assassinate him, not knowing that the glory is actually in his death. Do you understand that? Only for the devil to discover that I have hastened God's purpose. In the area that the devil is fighting you is him hastening God's purpose. It is amazing how that the same thing I've cried the most about all my life and the same thing that are now the point of contact of glory. If you go through it well, the only way we will know is that you will come back and testify about what you have cried about. Do you understand? I didn't get it. 
No, let me try and explain. Oh, I came from a family that is so bad. They hurt me up this day, everything bad. I went to hell. I suffered. My daddy was not there for me. My mommy was not there for me. There is an anointing that comes through that experience. That the point of your destiny opening up, what will open that door is actually the anointing that came from that experience. Meaning that you will discover that you could not have become what you have become unless that you have that experience. You will now look back at the experience and say, this experience was actually a blessing in disguise. It is a blessing that the beginning part is pain, but the end of it is sweet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like when you take bitter, have you ever had a breakup before? You look at the breakup, ah, I can never love again. Only to discover that the plan of God was at the end of that breakup. You are bouncing back. The mistakes I've made in my life, I don't owe the knowledge of it to you. If some of you will feel this man is not fit to pass on me, did he not save me from the same thing? You want to marry a girl. He told you about her past. She said, I'm not doing it again. You don't qualify for what the Bible calls husband. Because the way Jesus demonstrated himself as the head of the church is by washing her with the washing of the water and the blood. So you mean you dated a guy that slept with you and I bought it for you? Wow. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And I'm not going to take advantage of you for what that guy has done. I will show what it means to be a husband. I will nurture you. I will mature you. I will groom you. I will grow you. Meaning that there are no husbands if you cannot accommodate the excesses of the bride. Marry a husband, not a boy. Because I, I saw the need to come back and teach on when you are married to a spouse from a dysfunctional background. I need to teach about marrying someone from that background. Hmm. Because we can teach about it, but it is differently to now be trusted with somebody from that background. And God trusts you not to take advantage of that knowledge to marry a girl that the father hates so much. And you not treat her bad and say, Am I not better than her father? Across scriptures. Even Judas, his story ended because he killed himself. That was why it ended that way. That same blood was potent enough to wash him. Don't be like Judas. Forgive yourself. I've said this again and again. The story is not permitted to end until we sing the songs of victory. It will not end. You used to have before. Now you are somebody who doesn't have everybody ridicule you and walk on you. Don't worry. The story is not permitted to end until we sing the songs of victory. There was a case of a guy. There are messages I would like to recommend in this direction. I taught a message, Jephthah, will you still fight? <laughs> the case of a guy called Jephthah. The mother is a prostitute. They said he gave it to him out of wedlock. Call the prostitute. Bastard. Get down from amongst us. Leave us now. You're a bad child. Your mother is a woman of no legitimacy. Leave us. It is amazing how that is still those broken bones that come back to get the job done. And later they were faced with so much adversity. And they had to come and call the same Jephthah. Come and be captain over us. The stone that the builders reject is the chief cornerstone. Be careful of going to a place and see somebody that everybody keeps treading upon. That might be the captain. God he hides his weapon of offense so that men will not celebrate it too soon. He needs those advice to sharpen you. And the proof that you went through it well is that you can embrace those who ignored you. That's the proof. Any adversity you came to go through and you come out, say, say now, everybody's calling you, they are inviting you, so and so country. So people now called you, among those who have said, we can never invite this person. You now say, in the days that I was small, where were you people? 
you didn't go through what you have gone through well and you have just shown that there's a need to repeat classes you have only passed if you forgive amen when Esau met Jacob he showed that not just do I have I'm gracious he ran towards him and he hugged him that's headship that's headship lift your hands where you sit the visions are getting clearer. Amen. The things God was saying before that it looked like he stopped speaking about. Maybe you made a mistake. God is saying, he's speaking about them again. Amen. There is clarity. Amen. There is revelation. Amen. There's awareness. Amen. That same anointing you used to perceive is back again. The same closeness, the same presence, the same glory, the same cloud of glory. The way scriptures used to be alive to you. The things God was saying he will do. And it looked like he went and kept quiet for a long time. The same assignment he said he will use you for. That it looked like he stopped because you made a mistake and missed a step. He's back. And he's saying, do you still care? Do you still care? The plan still stands. The vision is still the same. You will still be used. I have, I have not changed my mind. It is still you. You felt you broke up with somebody. And you felt maybe you missed God. And the person is now married. And you felt your own is finished. He said, no. No. I can never run out of options. I'm still in the business of replacement. Lift your hands. And say, Lord, I receive. I receive your love. I walk in it. In the name of Jesus. My heart, my life receives the manifestation of the sense of water today in the name of jesus lift your hands everyone soaking into his love soaking into his love soaking into his love you guys didn't get the beat the other time we'll take that same sound that same there is a place come on just soak into his love if you want to see don't, don't amen don't get busy and distracted with conventional church. It's your father's house. If you want to lay on the floor, lay. If you want to, if you want to find a spot, find a spot. If any any posture, we don't we don't do dogma. We don't do church here. Any any posture, just find a place, and and receive his love. You know you can give love and not know how to receive. Yes, your greatest frustration can be because you are giving so much love, but you don't know how to receive it. You just receive it. Receive his everlasting love. Receive his everlasting love. We worship him. Beyond the drums. Bowing down before him. We worship him. Bowing down oh, yes. before him. That's why you made us. That's why we that family is still going to be sweet again that home will be sweet again everything will be back to original design everything will be back
Now get up on your feet, everybody. In the curriculum of this gospel that we preach, is there a message for a gay? That there is something, there is a part of this curriculum that can wash a man clean from that and the man is still a powerful vessel being used for nations? Does it exist? The issue is that it is not Jesus who is irritated. It is those who represent him. And we have come to that situation where we will see those we have termed the worst of sinners become the best of saints. It was amazing. Listen to this. How that they were stoning Stephen. And the man that they were dropping the clothes at his feet was the one God was saying, you are his replacement. Listen. You are a child of promise. The prophecies that went ahead of you, God wasn't blabbing. They will not fall to the ground. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying. And I know this like I don't mind him. Sometimes people go for big meetings. Sit down in the crowd. Look at the man of God. And they are in awe. Like my God. Ha! Ah, will I ever be this? Meanwhile, if the ministry of that man will have future, it will be because God will use that same person in the crowd, nameless and faceless, for him in future. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'd have loved to give you illustrations. That somebody's there saying, oh my God, this, 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 this. And it's the one that God will use to consolidate those works. There is a verdict upon your life that is not permitted to fall to the ground. It won't fall to the ground. It won't fall to the ground. It won't fall to the ground. And listen, you are not becoming another failed generation. As many as are waiting to say, we know it will fail. They will wait for life. Amen. And the stones that the builders reject is becoming chief cornerstones. There are many of you here that if they were to choose by voting, who should be great in your family? You know nobody will pick you. But there is something called the election of grace. Yes, sir. There's the election of grace. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and just thank him for that redeeming love. Thank him for that redeeming love. Oh, we give you praise. And we honor you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time arms. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time arms. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience.